oh what's going on everybody good morning welcome back to the channel uh we are currently in jacksonville florida believe it or not um yeah i don't know actually y'all see it right in the back the long car we've been waiting for so i finally come down to get it uh actually just picked up the tow dolly from u-haul um, so big red is about to do another tow once again Picked the tow dolly from u-haul the car has been sitting for about seven months. Um, I had the battery disconnected. Um, the last time I fired it up, it fired up, but it's been sitting. So we'll see if it fires up. Um, I know I got to remember if y'all see it. That front bumper got tore off when I pulled it from my grandmother's house. Um, I had one of those front wheel dollies and I didn't realize it was so low that it snagged the front bumper, so that's got to get replaced. Uh, the car actually has 191,000 miles on it. This is the original. I want to. This is the original block. That head when I first um, bought the car, we replaced the head, redid the head gasket, and put a new head on it. But the block itself has like 101,000 miles on it. Um, other than that, like is not in bad shape at all so the car is not in bad shape just needs like some touch up paint so but y'all already know you know you come to this channel you about to get a full customization done um other than that uh what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna go ahead and connect the battery and see if this thing fire up in one shot if not i gotta put a jumper on it but we're gonna connect the battery see if it turns it'll see if it fire up it has gas um, the last time when it broke down, it needed a fuel pump. I had came down, I replaced a fuel pump, but I didn't have like any way to tow it up north. So I know the fuel pump is good. That helped the car start and all that. It's going to need an oil change. Um, the only other thing that it's going to need is, is when you put it, it goes in reverse. And when you put it in drive, it's stuck in like one gear. So normally that's a, a transmission valve body issue, but also on that transmission, on the valve body for the transmission, you have shift solenoids. So I got the shift solenoids. So I'm gonna have to go by the auto parts store. Ooh, these nets. I'm gonna have to go by the auto parts store. I gotta get transmission fluid, um, gasket maker, cause you can find the gasket, but it takes forever for it to come. So get gasket maker, transmission fluid, and then I'm gonna change the oil itself. And that then everything should be straight. The only other thing too is I got uh, I gotta find a way once I get up there to take it to an AC shop. And uh, this once I get back to North Carolina, take it to an AC shop and get the AC repaired on it. Um, I need like a, what you call it? A vacuum and refill. Cause I put a new compressor on it, but I believe the lines and everything is clogged. So once we get that done, everything else wrong with this car is a bunch of cosmetic stuff. But I say about two years time, this car will look completely and totally different. The first thing I'm going to tackle though is the paint. The car was originally red, but when I got it, they had painted it black. The title says black. Um, so I don't know. I might go back over it with, I might, you know, wet sand, re-clear the black so that it looks good or I might change the color. So we'll see what happens, but other than that, let's get this car started. All right, so this is the first attempt to start the car. Like I said, it's been sitting. I got the battery connected. I don't know if you can see it on the dash 191, 395. That's how much the mileage is on the total car. So this is the first crank. Let's see if we crank. Let's prime the fuel a little bit because it has been sitting. And go from there and see if we got to jump it. Oh, oh, that baby fired right up. Oh, man. While it's going a little bit, I'm going to get it out the garage, give y'all a better view of it, and then, you know, let it warm up some. All right, so this is your transmission uh, valve body cover. Um, the It's got bolts going around it. Uh, I think it's like about, I'm going to say 12 to 16 bolts they're all 10 millimeters um get all of those off uh crack the bottom open first when draining it make sure you got a drain bucket uh you'll you'll pop 
those down loose first and then work your way to the top so that you can create a like a gap in between put your drain bucket underneath let the transmission fluid flow out and then you can pull the valve body cover off so let me get it. all right so as y'all can see I, what i would have did i went ahead and pulled it out into the street um the tire is definitely gonna need some air in it because it's been sitting for so long um I'm gonna have to uh, those two fronts i believe was new get two new ones for the back but give y'all a quick walk around of it. This is the 3G, y'all know what it is. So yeah, this car is about to go through some changes. It's gonna have, uh, I'm gonna put 18s on here right now. I mean, these little wheels is what it came with, them little 15 inches that somebody put on. But eventually it's gonna have 18 inches, it's gonna be lowered. You know, we're gonna, I'm gonna put my spin on it. You know what I'm saying? You know, most likely me and Amari will be tackling this. Um, put the spin on it. As you can hear, it's running. But anybody that's got a 3G Eclipse, you hear that ticking noise? Like, you'll be chasing a ghost trying to figure out what it is. And what it is, is these cars are known for the lifters. Known for the lifters going bad. So, Technically, they normally you can um, take Marvel Mystery Oil and put Marvel Mystery Oil in there when you do your oil change and supposed to kind of get in there and help clear it up. Or you can get new lifters and just make sure you soak them in like diesel oil for probably like a good 24 hours. Soak them in diesel oil before you actually install them in the car. That way, you know, you got new lifters. So with these... I'm going to try to see when I change the oil if Marvel Mystery Oil works and help clear that up. If it doesn't, then I'll go through and get lifters and, just, you know, soak them in diesel oil and then I'll just replace the lifters on it. And that whole ticking noise that these cars do is acquired up. A lot of people don't know that about these cars that they do always have a problem with the lifters. You can put brand new lifters on there and by next year it needs new lifters but it normally sits in the um, valve body but i'm gonna let this thing warm up and then we're gonna take it around the block so i can show y'all try to show y'all what exactly is doing and how it's getting standing one gear because you can literally tell by the rpm that it doesn't shift so let me get this hood closed and then we go from there So for some reason about this car, it's like, as soon as you go to move, it seems like it just wants to shut off. Um, I gotta figure out what that is, cause I'm not even getting a light for it. I'm thinking it's a misfire, but it's not really resembling. It's like, it's resembling a misfire, but when you press the gas and go to move, it's like, it's all fine, but it wants to shut off. Last time I did that was a fuel delivery issue with the fuel pump, but it's, I was just checking it before I decided to go ahead and drive it. Nothing seems wrong. I got my scanner hooked up to it and it's, um, I don't know. It, it just keeps dropping down. Um, I know I got the market exhaust. Maybe I got to change the space at the O2 sensor, but we're still going to try to drive it to see if maybe, uh, it do what I was telling y'all to do. If not, I'm going to have to push it back. But I don't know, well, you might not be able to hear it, but if I can get on a straight line, you'll be able to see it. So it's like having a CVT transmission. As you see, it's just, the more I get on it, there's, it should have dropped down when changing gears, but it's just one gear, but it's got power and it moves, but it just stays one gear, one gear only. It's, even at low speed, it should shift through the gears. It doesn't even shift through the gears. So, um, yeah, it don't even shift through the gears. So, let me see if I can. I don't want to be speeding in my sister's neighborhood, but see if I can do my best as y'all can see. So, 
See, right now, it should have changed gears is what it should have did. But it wasn't changed, it's just one solid gear. The higher you go up in speed, the uh, higher the RPM just goes up. So it's definitely not um, shifting. I changed a lot of stuff, like the shift solenoids and things of that nature. I did change those things and it just, it, de it didn't do what it should have did. Cause I got all those codes for the shift solenoid, but it just, it was like, no, we ain't shifting. Put it that way. So, okay. So I'm all right. Well, you know what? Let me, um, look more into it. And, you know, I called, consulted my brothers who also does mechanic work. And we all came up with the same conclusion as far as, you know, replacing the valve body. So I'm going to go change out the shift solenoids. Cause if it wasn't a valve body, I could do the shift solenoids. So I'm going to go change out the shift solenoids and then we're going to go from there. All right, so once you got the valve uh, body cover off, these right here, this is your valve body, right? This is the transmission valve body. And on the sides are the transmission solenoids. If I'm not mistaken, they should be held in with an eight millimeter. Uh, let's double check. Yeah, so it's an eight millimeter socket. You got one bolt there, one right there. You can see both of them. Um, should be said, better come down to the bottom. Then you got one right there, one, where is it? So you got one there, one up here. So it's three on this, actually it's four on this side. So you got one, two, Three, four. So in between is four because this is the bracket that also holds them in. And on this side, it should be one, if I'm not mistaken, two and three. So basically, you just undo those bolts, pull them out, got to wiggle them a little bit, disconnect the connectors, wiggle them out, and then get them off and put them back on. And then you just reverse the process of putting the bolts back uh, when you put it on with a new gasket. This is the pan here. So let's get it replaced and then we'll see what happens. What's up everybody? So today is the next day and we finally got got the black Eclipse home. I, you know, I got to think of a name for that car. But we finally got it home. Uh, we did get the shift solenoids replaced yesterday. Um, right now I'm just putting it under the cover so I can protect it some more. But we finally got the shift solenoids replaced yesterday and I started getting a transmission control range coat. So, I don't know. I got to dig more into the transmission. Um, dig more into the transmission. But I know those sensors had got replaced, but that was eight months, about eight months ago. And the car's been sitting. So, I have to look back into it. But it was, I got a code for the output, the primary input uh, shaft speed sensor, and then the output speed sensor and then it threw and then okay i cleared those codes and then when i went to drive it um and came back and parked it through a code for the uh transmission control range which is the gear select on the transmission or something i gotta really look into it but i believe that's what it is the transmission control range is not communicating with the um with the tcm which is the transmission control models it's not communicating with it so I gotta probably either just take a multimeter and fully check it or basically, how can I say, um, or basically just trace the wires because the car's been sitting. Um, I don't know, maybe something could have crawled and chewed it or whatsoever. But other than that, I mean, the car, as y'all seen, it drove. Um, it still actually drives, it starts up. It's got a misfire. I believe it's the coil packs and spark plug wires. So eventually, because it's got new spark plugs. So spark plug wires, the coil packs, um, and then whatever's going on with the transmission. And then I'm going to flush out the engine and everything. And this car be on the road in no time. It's got a lot of work that needs to be done cosmetic-wise, as y'all seen in the video. But other than that, it's pretty solid for 191,000 miles. The only thing that was basically new or replaced on when i got it was the head 
So the block got 191,000 on it. The transmission got 191,000 on it. So by it being a 2001, especially older car with that high mileage, it's gonna need some work, but it's it's been maintained. So it's gonna need some work, been maintained. But yeah, we finally made it home. Um, and other than that, uh, I'm just I just finished putting everything up. Like I like y'all just saw the car up. So got it all covered up. That way. Whatever these little tree branches and all that try to fall in on, fall on it. Click, like, and subscribe to the video, and y'all stay tuned for more updates to the Eclipse. All right. Peace.